Everybody, it's Tyler here at Championships, checking in one of my favorite teams, 29-10, Jack in the Bot. We're checking with them right after. Finalists here on Newton, so congratulations on a great performance in this season. Also, a couple blue banners earlier in the season, a lot of engineering awards as well, too, and I think very well spoken for why. Jack in the Bot, every single year, building an impressive machine, of course, following that note journey as we go through, but a lot of great things when we look at the packaging of this robot and what goes into it as well. you got to take a look at how this note comes in and diverts into the side of their robot. I can't wait to learn more about it and some great programming features as well, too. So let's learn more about them here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Right now, let's start talking about uh, kind of the ground up for it. You're using some new sword drive modules, so we'll hear a little bit more yeah, about sure. that. And then this notepad your team has is absolutely incredible. So detail more about it for us. Yes, so essentially we have an under the bumper intake. And then from the intakes, I think one of the most interesting parts of our robot is how the note can intake from, like, feed from any angle. So we have four vertical rollers on our turret that take the note from the intake. Um, and if these two rollers are here, once they contact the roller in any angle, the, these rollers will pull the note around the turret and around this cage right here. And the swerve modules, the narrows that we have in the Mark for Eyes that are basically just narrow, um, the standoffs on those act as a part of the cage. That way these four rollers can bring the note to the center and then get taken up by our shooter. Very cool. And I uh, mentioned earlier when we were talking uh, that you're implementing some new of the sword drive modules on there from SDS. Mm -hmm. uh, can you just talk a little bit more about what they are? They're basically marked for eyes, but they're narrow. And then this allows like the note to be able to get taken into our robot very nicely. We didn't have to like worry about like putting it taller or anything like that. We can we are able to just intake the note in there because of because of the space that that provides. Very cool. Can we see a note come in and uh, detail that journey? Is there anything you want to add as it comes in? Because the diversion bath is so cool in this. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can watch as the note comes in, and then you can actually watch the four rollers pull them into the center. So looking at this turret, no matter where your turret is uh, actually angled, you're still having it come in for that, right? Yes. Um, when you were designing this and coming in, like, were there any major considerations to make or what kind of testing did you do to make sure that it's always going to come in every time? Yeah, so what we did in the beginning of the season was like conceptual prototyping. We didn't actually know if the rollers in the center could pull it into the middle very well. So we made sure to prototype that. And once we got proof of concept, we started designing right away. And then what is your team doing uh, for the amp? I know you got the little bit of an amp bar in there. I really like actually the simplicity for this. I think it's very effective to so talk more about it. So in order to implement the amp, we had to make it make sure that it was light. Um, so essentially what it is is that our shooter just shoots the note straight up and then the amp bar allows it to like not back up. The note doesn't fall out. So the note doesn't fall out into the amp. So just going right up in there? Yep. Overall, this robot so efficient on the field uh, so far. I really love everything that's gone through it. Anything else from a mechanical side that you want to detail or cover? Um, I'll just mention our climber for sure. Um, it's like we did the climber at the end of the season, so we also had to make sure that it was very light and very simple. We went with a worm gear in order to prevent back drive, and that's... Very cool. We see that climber coming up on there. Super effective. Everything that's gone into this. Just this packaging is so beautiful. So really great stuff. There's a lot of other great programming things that go into this robot too, though, Sadir. So I'd love to hear more about uh, where you're coming from on that programming side, uh, going through some of your machine states as well. So I'd love to hear more about it. Tell us more. So I think one of the uh, cool things uh, that mentioned is obviously we you know spend a lot of time constructing this turret, right? So what we do is during teleop we have continuous goal tracking. So we can take a look at what that looks like here for a second. So uh, enabling. All right, so uh, as Rainia mentioned, we have a load from any angle, right? And so with load from any angle, one of the really big strategic advantages that we have is we can intake a piece and uh, our turret is just going to stay pointed at the goal the entire match. We have continuous April tag uh, tracking. We have a one limelight on the turret that continuously rotates and it uh, tracks the um, uh, one of the April tags that is on the speaker. So the way that we actually accomplish this is when we're able to see a limelight target on the speaker, we uh, there's a field, uh, limelight returns back, uh, the horizontal uh, angle to the, uh, to the 
to the target um, tag, whichever you're tracking, which is called TX. So we wrote an algorithm that drives TX to zero by offsetting, by making the set point of the turret an offset of its current position in order to drive that to zero. So that's when we have a target. Now, when we're on the other side of the field and we can't really see uh, what's you know what's going on, the stage is in our way, other robots are blocking. When we do see the uh, the um, April Tech on the field, we relocalize. And so one of the really cool uh, uh, problems that we had to work through this season was our limelight is actually rotating on a robot. So the robot pose uh, needs to be calculated uh, differently based on where the limelight is positioned relative to the robot. So that was one of the really interesting uh, challenges that we worked through this year. But anyway, uh, resetting the odometry using the uh, pose that we get from the limelight uh, means that when we're on the other side of the field, we still have an accurate representation of where our robot is on the field, which means we can do the math uh, in order to calculate where which direction the turret should be pointed. So we know the location of the uh, uh, April tag of the uh, uh, that's on the speaker, and we know the location of our robot. So with that, we can essentially calculate a field relative turret angle, which uh, it needs to go to, and then we take that field relative angle and we convert it to something robot relative based on the rotation of the drive base. So you'll see us in matches, we'll just intake a piece and it's like already there and the turret is like pointed straight at the goal, even though like the stage and everything's in their way. We come back, we shoot it immediately. I really like the uh, the versatility with your robot too. You know, watching you uh, in playoffs as well as we went through, a very elegant passer as well too with their yes. shooting as well too. Um, as you're looking at like the different states on your robot as well, uh, can you just kind of walk through kind of what that looks like and dive a bit deeper into your states of your robot? Yeah, for sure. So uh, you know, we we mentioned passing. So something that we really did differently this year than we typically do last year is we use the uh, WPI lib command based framework and we, we we had all the subsystems, but instead of making our code based on the commands that WPI lib has we instead created a superstructure class which uh, impl uh, extended the uh, subsystem base that WPI Lib has. And so what this allowed us to do is that when we had a uh, you know an any sort of controller binding, like when we press a button, like you think about what what's supposed to happen when you press a button on your robot, let's say right bumper, right bumper is to shoot. Okay, well what does shooting actually mean, right? It means that the shooter subsystem is you know spinning up the flywheels to go fast. It means that the feeding subsystem is you know feeding the note uh, feeding the note through to, to hit the flywheels. It means the turret is pointed towards the goal. So in Instead of having our um, controller bindings class, you press this button and like five different commands happen to make all these things happen in tandem, which are interdependent on each other. You instead push a super state. And so because we uh, our superstructure extends the uh, periodic, uh, or extends the, uh, because our superstructure extends the subsystem base that WPI Lib has, it can iterate through periodically and uh, make those state transitions as necessary. So for example, when we press shoot, we just push substates to each of the subsystems and they handle it uh, themselves instead of you know creating commands that require interdependence and stuff. I think that's something that's really made our uh, um, the programming of our robot super clean this year and it makes adding new features like passing notes super easy because all you have to do is create a new super state uh, and just transition to that super state based on the button binding and all the work is done for you. You don't have to figure out how like certain subsystems have you know mesh together and creating commands that require a bunch of like different subsystems. Well 2910 Jack in the Box, congratulations on a phenomenal season. Overall, this robot is just absolutely gorgeous. So much that teams can learn from this as well, too. So we appreciate you being uh, such a great contributor to the community in that light as well, too. But we look forward to course seeing in future seasons as well, how your team does. Congratulations here at World Championships, and thanks for telling us more about your robot and this here in Crescendo. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you so much. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.